Welcome back to Gear Check Games. This is part four of our Pokemon Red playthrough. We have got to take on Mount Moon for real this time. We just dipped our little baby toe in last time. Hey, at yeah. least you got a potion. Yeah. And a rare candy. And a rare candy. This is this is the first of many. I, I stock up on rare candies till the end of the game for a certain Pokemon that I've mentioned before. Oh yeah, this is a... This is another bug trainer that I'm skipping. I try to skip like 30 to 60% of them because we all know what they are. Uh huh. Yeah, they didn't do a great job of diversifying the trainer's uh, rosters early in the game, did they? No. Which I guess uh, maybe for a new player is a good thing because, like, you're just kind of coming to grips with the battle mechanics, but, like,. When it's something that's as mechanically simple as, like, picking an attack from a menu, like, you get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at that point, it's I think it's more important to just teach you about the different kinds of Pokemon and, like, what they're weak to while the game is still easy instead of just endlessly, like, throwing Caterpies at them. Yeah, which, I guess, for fodder bonds, they're all right. Like, they're, they're not hard to fight, but, like, I could... I do, like, a little challenge... <laughs> Well, not even challenge, just, like, variety. Yeah. Well, I guess we were we were only dealing with 150 dudes, so... Yeah. They were kind of limited here in the beginning. <laughs> See, but I feel like this game is kind of backloaded as far as, like, Pokemon diversity goes. Oh, yeah. And especially, like, once you get to Gen 2. And this is something I, I will never understand, but for some reason, you know, they made all these cool new Pokemon for the Johto region in um, Gold and Silver... Mm -hmm. But, like, a third of them you can only get in Kanto? Like, where were they in this game? Did they just yeah. migrate over there, or...? Man. That, that, that reminds me of one of my favorite Gen 2 mons, friggin' Houndour and Houndoom. You can only be caught next to Celadon City mm. in, gra in gold and silver, and I'm like, but I need a better fire type if I'm not rolling... Uh, Cyndaquil, oh. and I'm not gonna roll Magmar because he's a slow POS. Oh. <laughs> well, he's not that slow. He's not that slow. <laughs> I used a Magmar uh, one time in Soul Silver. He's a slightly good. bigger bird. Chunk bird. Yeah, and his stats didn't go up too drastically either. Mm -hmm. I forget if we've addressed uh, Japanese Pokemon names yet in this playthrough, but uh, Pidgeotto always had one of my favorite. It's just Pigeon. Mm. <laughs> That's great. Well, we already yeah, went well, over... Pidgeot is just Pigeon, but they changed the N to a T. <laughs> pigeon T. We, we, already pigeon. We, we already talked about uh, one of my favorite Pokemon that has a great Japanese name, and that's Magmar's Japanese name. Oh yeah, Boober. Oh, yeah. Boober. Boober. The headbutt Pokemon. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, this Mega is one of the Punch. best moves in the game. You just won the game. I did. Mm -hmm. according, to, according to Rich Evans, you just won the game. Yeah. Uh, on the outside, to, to stay relevant and to be able to compare, I've been playing Fire Red on the side. Uh, and I, I'm rolling with a main key, and I taught him uh, Mega Punch, because there's a, there's a move tutor right outside of Mountain Moon that'll teach you Mega Punch and Mega Kick. And I have not regretted my choice at all. Mm. That move is straight up broken. Yeah, I, I tend to shy away from offensive moves that don't have 100% accuracy, but, like, I'm kind of coming around to moves like that. Like, they'll, they'll yeah. save you in a pinch, investing they're, they're in good. that extra power. They're good, they're good gambling moves, and it's a perfect move for Mankey and Primate, because they're glass cannons anyway. Like, they, they have better... Primate has better attack where he is than Charmeleon does. I guess that'll be until Charmeleon gets Slash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've... I'm... I'm stuck in a confusion loop right now with this Zubat. Which... This... This this leads to me to one of my favorite combos. I don't think I've talked about it on a Pokemon game yet with you guys. How much do you guys hate the confusion and paralysis combo that can happen uh. in Gen 1? <laughs> You like not being able I mean, to just attack a bad time in ever. Any game. It's like there, there are several Pokemon in this game that have moves that can do both to you. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of terrible moves, there's rap again. Oh, yeah. Our, our friend Ekans is at it again. Okay, not terrible moves, terribly unbalanced moves. Yeah. What what I love is uh, Pokemon like Bellsprout and Dratini also learn rap. Like, fun- fun- functionally, kind of like just bad Pokemon for where you are in the game. Mm-hmm. I like, like the... that. Go on. I was going to say, those moves just like increase their trolling ability. Uh huh. Like, well, especially. Integrity. You know, I don't know why you ever would, but once you get your Dratini evolved into Dragonite, and the, you know, you can conceivably still have rap on that thing. I don't know how that works, but, like... <laughs> he just gives him a big ol' hug. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, like, squeezes... Yeah. Oh, my... He carries around a big roll of cellophane rap. Oh, God. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like, uh, Beware, the Pokemon they introduced oh, in Gen 7. That just hu- literally he... hugs people to death. Yeah. Mm. Why does he not have a move just called Hug that, like, paralyzes because things? Because this is a game for children, Trey. Hugging is... A special ability is hugging people hugging. to death is not for children. <laughs> there, There is a Pokemon that can learn the move. Neither is carrying off kids to hell. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Who does that again? Is that Drifloon? Drifloon. Yeah, Drifloon, yeah. I think. Oh, man. Freaking... There's Pokemon, like... Uh, camera erupt that can learn eruption. Like you can just cover your enemy in hot magma. <laughs> the kids game, everybody. It's fine. It's <laughs> the, the Pokemon enjoy it. It's like hmm. a nice relaxing. It's like a nice lava, lava bath. bath. Yeah. <laughs> With all that that entails. <laughs> oh boy. So how do you guys feel about the? Um, I know we briefly talked about dungeons in Viridian Forest, but how do you feel about the dungeons in this game? Uh, uh, there are some that I like more than others. <laughs> I mean, I've never, I've always, I've probably made my stance clear on random encounters. I've always hated them, and that's like the main challenge of the dungeons, yeah. aside from the puzzle elements. But then, like when you're trying to solve a puzzle, you're just constantly getting interrupted. And uh, I when I this. played this, when I played Fire Red, it was. Uh, that was back during my, uh, super cheapskate phase, where I just, like, refused to buy any, like, not completely necessary items, so I didn't use repels or anything. Oh, yeah. By the end of my playthrough, I was just, like, I was so done that I was just skipping past trainers. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you play like our friend Nick and actually fight every wild battle, you'll be swole by the end of the game. Yeah, you won't have to grind. (laughs) I mean, you'll be yeah. grinding as you go, but you won't have to, like, dedicate time to grinding. Yeah. That's that's one principle I tried to implement on this uh, playthrough. Because as you'll see, like, every time I fight somebody, like, I'll edit in, like, the last move just to prove that I fought them. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, I think, like, I, I think I fought, like, almost every random encounter I got. Uh, like, my, you know, no repel random encounters. Uh, it, until the very end where I was just, like, so bored that I was just running away from battles and trying to, like, skip past trainers. And I only also, I only started doing that until after, like, I think the second to last gym, I think. Uh, and by the time I reached the Elite Four, I was, like, probably more than ten levels underleveled. Well, I mean, even the Elite Four is, like, a step up. Like, there is a bit of a level <laughs> jump at the end of this yeah. game. I think what I ended up doing was, I was just like, I am not gonna grind, <laughs> so I just, like, I ba- I basically just went up against the, the Elite Four severely underleveled, and just tried to, like, cheese them out. Mm-hmm. But still, it was still without, like, items, because oh, I was gosh. still being a cheapskate. Don't spend one dime on potions, <laughs> they're not necessary. <laughs> Mr. Krabs was my spirit animal. <laughs> uh, to reiterate on the dungeons, uh, I like Mount Moon as a s- second dungeon. It's like it's t- to me, even though there is like a, a large uh, uh, encounter rate, like the amount of trainers to me balances it out. Uh, I will say it's a tad long. Oh, by Flappy. Um, especially for a second dungeon, because it is literally your only route to get to Cerulean. 
So it's a bit of a slog if you're trying to do it all in one go. Yeah. Um, I guess my, my thing with the dungeons in Gen 1 is... Um, I think it's fair to say that they're flawed, or at least that they're not everyone's cup of tea. Like, they do really rely on, like... You know, just the random encounters with Pokémon, like, as the challenge. Like, there aren't yeah. really that many interesting puzzles other than just, like, navigation. Um, but I do appreciate that there are part- that there are areas in this game that are, like, more challenging. Or that at least make you feel, like, more, okay, I gotta be careful in here. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, um, hasn't really sat well with me in the newer games is that the way that caves seem to be designed is that, with some exceptions, of course, but some caves in the games, there's kind of, like, like, there's a tunnel that goes through the cave that's fairly short and straightforward, but, like, all of the more challenging areas of the cave are left completely optional. Which I guess, you know, from a certain point of view, maybe that's the way to do it, but... Yeah. I don't know, I feel like... If you're too willing to, like, let people skip past challenging parts of the game, you're kind of cheating out- cheating them out of an experience that they might ultimately enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, not everybody. I mean, I'm not saying everybody will enjoy being put through that, but, like, I don't know, I kind of look back fondly on, you know, s stumbling through Mount Moon as a kid. Oh, Just, yeah. And I'm not- yeah, uh, and again. Yeah, this is not, like, the best way to design dungeons, but I at no. least appreciate that they were like, here's a cave you gotta make it through. It's not easy, yeah. but, like, you can do it. That's that's one thing I'll give Gen 2, is, like, they actually have puzzles in theirs, and, like, uh -huh. there's, like, multiple exits in some, like, Dark Cave. Like, the dun like they're still optional, but there's a lot of goodies in them. Yeah. Mm. yeah I think Gen uh, 2 so struck a fairly good balance. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was one thing while you were talking. There was one thing I did on here that I'm glad they I kept. I was gonna point that out. <laughs> yeah, about because you can use if you don't have any revives. If you have a rare candy, it'll revive your Pokemon to like two HP. Oh, it does. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. still well, true. Because leveling up usually like raises their HP, and if it raises their max HP, then they also get like whatever HP their max HP was raised by. Yeah. So then it can bring them up from zero. Okay, I've been playing Pokemon for nearly 20 years, and I just learned that tonight. <laughs> Whoa. That's cool. Well, I didn't know it either, but, like, I saw it in the video. I was like, oh, so it must work like this. Well, I, me and my brother experimented as a kid with that. It was like, we would get in jams like the one I was in. And be like, all right, I'm going to see if this works. <laughs> just to, because I needed Flappy to get out of this game. I didn't want to do it twice. Because there is a fight coming up that's actually kind of hard. Oh yeah, with the... Now I'm mad. With the super nerd. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh god, these freaking encounters. I now I've heard this... that um, in later gens, once they gave it better moves, uh, Paris is a pretty good HM user. Oh, yeah. Because I think he can get, like, Cut, Flash, and Rock Smash, like most of the ones you don't want on your normal team. Oh, yeah. I, I think I use Paris as my, like, HM donkey. Yeah, c yeah. Um, <laughs> come, come Fire Red, uh, I think Paris had, like, the moveset he needed to really shine as an HM user. Yeah. Although... The implementations, of, the implementation of HMs was kind of borked from the start. Like I, yeah. I like the idea of you know having obstacles in the overworld, and I like the idea of having your Pokemon overcome those obstacles. But that needs to be kept se separate from like their actual battle moves. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's one thing I'm glad that Sun and Moon fixed. Oh yeah, like never look back. <laughs> Yeah, that is one of the greatest implementations they've ever done in a Pokemon game. <laughs> uh huh. It's like just make it all rental Pokemon, and then they kind of kept that going forward with uh, le the Let's Go games, where yeah. Pikachu and Eevee just kind of they find ways to do the HMs. <laughs> uh huh. 
My favorite one is the little balloon flying machine that they use. I'm like, where did you get this? <laughs> you stole this in your tail? He stole it from Isabelle in Smash Bros. <laughs> yes. I can just imagine Pikachu flapping his little arms. <laughs> Stay afloat, buddy. Wait a minute, I haven't played Let's Go. Is Pikachu... Okay, do you remember the opening cutscene of Yellow, where they have Pikachu in all those different, like, situations, and one of him is, like, tied to a bunch of balloons? It's kind of like that. It okay. looks like a it looks like a bike with no wheels, but instead it has like a propeller and it's attached to balloons. Mm. Okay, this coughing sprite is just straight up wrong. Uh -huh. Like his the skull and crossbones is supposed to be beneath his face. Oh, he looks very concerned. Yeah. <laughs> Should I get this looked at? <laughs> I was born different. Honestly, he looks, um... He looks vandalized in that art. Maybe it's just because <laughs> I'm used to normal coughing, but it looks like somebody, like, painted that on him. Which is kind of a cool touch, honestly. So... What was he gonna go for, Trey? Neither. You always gotta go for Team Helix. Helix or Team Dome? Praise, praise Helix forever. <laughs> Dome is the false prophet <laughs> of the end times. And Flareon is and his I brother. remember when but that like, was like a thing. But I like Kabutops. You mean Discount Scyther? <sighs> you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I, 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 guess, I guess Kabutops doesn't evolve into one of the greatest Pokemon ever designed, so... Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, but does Kabutops turn into Scyzor? <laughs> Are you implying that Scizor is not one of the greatest Pokemon of all time? That's what I'm Because we're going to have some Scizor. issues if that's what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying Scizor is a straight-up hoss. <laughs> okay. He's a beast. Crisis averted. Yeah. Mm. I'm looking... There we go. Is that a visual glitch? Kind of great ball. With, like, the no. white highlight on the side? You just gotta guess. <laughs> uh -huh. I think I look for another one over here. I don't know if I find it or not. Uh, in that spot where I found the Great Ball, that's the spot in Fire Red and Leaf Green where you um, get taught Mega Punch or Mega Kick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that TM but, you picked up is Mega Kick, isn't it? Uh, or am I? Oh. No. It's a whirlwind. Oh, it's... Whirlwind. Oh, it's something to sell. Okay. <laughs> it's completely useless. Yeah, there's a lot of things. I'm, I think I edited out most of the... Uh, item management, and because most Pokemon centers are times for me to just deposit everything I don't need into the into the box. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, that was kind of an interesting little, well, inconvenience that this game had that the other mm -hmm. ones kind of did away with, was having yeah. to, like, manage the space in your backpack. Yeah. Um, that's, I'm very glad in Gen 2 they implemented the pocket system. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. You, you, could, you could still only have 20 in each pocket, but you had multiple pockets. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank well, God for Gen 2. We've, <laughs> we've made it to Cerulean City, so... We have? Next we have, yeah, this is wow. Cerulean. What a world that's we why, live in. That's why it's blue. It's a whole new world. <laughs> 